Welcome to the breathtaking Eagles Base Villa situated in the western village of Bethel. It's our location for today's episode of Let's Talk Tobago and we cannot wait to show you all this wonderful property has to offer. Also in the next half hour we've got lots in store for you as we recap the major events in Tobago over the past week. So stay with us for all the details. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Tobagonians share their thoughts on the island's health sector at a special consultation session. The THA signs off on a partnership that could be a game changer for health on the island. Signal Hill Secondary honors the past and the present for their academic success and contributions to the school. And later, Tobago's reefs are being closely monitored due to the threat of coral bleaching. We have all these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. There can be no more fitting name for this property than Eagles Base Estate. The estate stands pretty much at the zenith of Tobago and its panoramic view of the south spans from coast to coast. The rolling landscape gently falls away from the peak, stretching out towards the Atlantic Sea to the east and the Caribbean Sea to the west. In our first story, healthcare in Tobago has come a long way, but there's always room for improvement. With this in mind, a task force is reviewing the efficiency of the island's health institutions. The public is also being consulted on their healthcare needs and concerns. Here's this story. The Health Task Force is looking at areas to enhance health care in Tobago. The task force was given its mandate by Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles. One of its key activities is to meet with the public to get valuable feedback. This time around, the focus is on improving the efficiency of the Scarborough General Hospital. According to residents, one major concern is the need for better and faster front desk and attendant services. You need somebody in front. So when the relative or whoever it is, or you hire a car, whatever it is, and you come there, and you're not feeling well, you're very ill, or whatever it is, or you're going to have a heart attack, that somebody's there that can, they already have a wheelchair, or they could summon a wheelchair right away, so you don't have to lift your relative inside. Tobagonians are also calling for more permanent specialists, especially in cardiology and orthopedics. Why do we have to wait on everybody to be coming to Tobago to attend to us? We have a hospital, I understand. We have the machinery. We have everything in place. Pay somebody to stay to in Tobago or have somebody trained to use the machines or whatever system have to be used to attend to patients. Other concerns raised by stakeholders included providing medical professionals with more training opportunities, ensuring that the mental health of TRHA's staff is given serious consideration, and placing greater emphasis on preventative health care education for residents, given the number of deaths related to non-communicable diseases and their complications. The five-member committee will hold discussions with other stakeholders in the healthcare service before submitting their recommendations. Persons can email their suggestions to oca.secretary at tha.gov.tt or write to Chief Administrator Smithfield Trace, Scarborough, Tobago. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The huge open plan kitchen at Eagles Base is fully equipped. In fact, it's inspiring whether you're getting in that first cup of coffee in the morning or preparing a fantastic dinner spread. Now this, COVID-19, the newest strain of the coronavirus to affect humans is currently grabbing global headlines. Tobago continues to prepare procedures and resources to respond to potential cases. Omidara Mills explains the plans being outlined by officials. Have a look. COVID-19, previously called the 2019 novel coronavirus, is now present in over 60 countries, with more than 88,000 confirmed cases. Tobago has had one suspected case, 
a citizen who studied in China. That national has been screened, quarantined, tested and cleared of having the illness by health officials. Like the airport and seaport, our health centers and hospital also have procedures to treat with potential coronavirus cases. The key thing in terms of response to primary care is identifying signs and symptoms, identifying a positive travel history or contact with persons who have that travel, travel history. Once we have that, we will then isolate the person within the compound. We will notify the hospital that the person will be coming. We will notify the transportation vehicle. In this case, it will be Thames. All right, as to pick up where they're picking up and for transport to the hospital setting from there. The patient will be given either a surgical mask or an N95 mask, depending on the severity of their condition. Other forms of treatment will be provided as needed. Protective measures will also be enforced in transit to the Scarborough General Hospital. Our ambulance services have the two compartments where we can separate our drivers and the attendants. All right, we could also have the person in the back, depending on the, the severity of the illness. We, that person will be in full and appropriate PPEs. The driver would also be in the appropriate PPEs moving so that we ensure we safeguard persons. Medical practitioners at the Scarborough General Hospital are already updated on procedures to treat with potential coronavirus cases. Head of the Accident and Emergency Department, Dr. Ian Sami, explains. It wasn't as if we were starting from scratch. Um, COVID-19 being a respiratory infection caused by a virus was very similar in many ways to the influenza threat that we had in November and December. And based on the WHO and PAHO guidelines, we were able to adjust those plans to take into consideration some of the special differences in this virus. We again revisited our plans and we actually had a walkthrough of our department to make sure that we had the resources needed and sensitized our staff uh, on what their roles were in case anything needed to happen. Sensitization meetings are ongoing with medical staff as well as various stakeholders. Health officials are also updating the public through the media and via social media. Persons are advised to protect themselves by following these guidelines. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Use alcohol-based hand sanitizers if soap and water are not available. Avoid touching your face with unwashed hands. Disinfect frequently used surfaces. Practice social distancing. And stay at home if you are sick. I am Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Outdoors at Eagles Base, the deck has a natural stone finish. It's inviting you to relax and lounge in the sun or in the shade if you prefer. You could enjoy the hammock, dine outdoors or almost any other activity you choose with the view as your inspiration. In our next story, an official memorandum of understanding has been signed that will pave the way for Tobago's first school of medicine. Officials are expecting its impact to resonate far beyond the health and education sectors. Here are the details. A recent Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU signing, is expected to boost education in Tobago and the health sector. The MOU was signed by the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy, and St. Andrew's School of Medicine. This will make St. Andrews the first medical school to be established on the island. It's a partnership aimed at enhancing human capital development in Tobago, as well as the health care services for residents. With the opportunities that we, we envision from the, the St. Andrews um, School of Medicine, we believe the entire environment will change. And therefore, um, our embracing this initiative and giving support to it is, is um, Firstly, because um, our industry will benefit. Next, all of Tobago will benefit. And, um, and we see that as our primary, primary objective. Dr. Agatha Carrington says preparations are being made to have the school up and running. And she explains what the people of Tobago can expect. 
Our teaching hospital model is on its way with the, the um, advent of um, St. Andrew's School of Medicine coming on. It means teaching, learning, treatment and care will be occurring in Scarborough General as well as the extended campus at the old fort. And therefore, we have been moving aggressively to ensure that we could embrace this, this initiative. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles thinks this partnership will have a ripple effect on other economic sectors. The integrated benefits that can come in terms of foreign exchange, in terms of um, expansion of services, your hotel sector, your uh, restaurant sector, your um, transportation sector, your entertainment sector. The MOU established an agreed framework for collaboration between St. Andrews and the THA. The school, however, will only be open after registration takes place. Then there's an accreditation process. The signing ceremony took place at the conference room of the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy at Dutch Fort Scarborough. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. It is time for a break, but next up, Signal Hill secondary students and staff, both past and present, are honored at the school's Achievement Day celebrations. More when we return. The villa features six elegantly decorated bedrooms, each with its own ensuite. It means privacy, comfort, and relaxation, everything you'd hope for on your next vacation. Now, Signal Hill Secondary School turns 43 this year, and to commemorate this milestone, the school celebrated the achievements and the contribution of its staff and students. Our cameras were at the school for the big occasion to bring you these highlights. Past and present students and staff of Signal Hill Secondary have been honored for their service to the school. This was part of Signal Hill's recent Achievement Day celebrations. Students who earned a 70% and above average grade were also awarded for their excellence. Principal Xavier King says there's much to be thankful for at the institution. In this our 43rd year of our existence as a school, and with the team beyond all expectations, it is with immense joy and excitement that I express my gratitude to both past teachers and students who have contributed in no small measure to the Signal Hill brand and the many achievements we have garnered over our short history. The Achievement Day went beyond academics. The school's academic department had displays supported by the school alumni. Various past Signal Hill students shared advice and fond memories of their time at school with the current crop. This included feature speaker Annabelle Brasnell. From my era, I have fond memories of our football and singing successes, of friendships formed and lessons learned, both academic and in life, from inspirational and committed teachers. In this new dispensation, I am pleased to see an expanded curriculum. I'm really pleased to see the photography club. If it was here when I was here, I would have definitely been a part of it. And it is especially gratifying to see a new generation of star students blazing trails in so many different fields. Special recognition went to awardee Parthenope Nicholson. She's an icon in education and a past Signal Hill history teacher. And a classroom in the school will now be named in her honor. Mr. King has fond memories as a student taught by Mrs. Nicholson. And Mr. Nicholson was well respected by students and other teachers. And whatever she says, go. Not because she was domineering, but because we had that kind of respect for her. Students also had a role in recognizing the school's 43rd anniversary. They produced a video to capture the essence of the school's brand. It's now available on the Signal Hill Secondary Facebook page. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk to Bigo. The living room here exudes a Caribbean life. It is the centerpiece of a huge open space and is as laid back as island life. 
The decor also reflects West Indian flavor with the wicker armchairs and a coffee table that seems designed for a slow afternoon game of Scrabble that no one has to finish. So we head outdoors now to the recent Tobago Primary School's track and field championships. If this year's edition is anything to go by, the island's future in the sport is promising. Here's more. It's an event that's produced most of Tobago's past and present track stars. That's why every year the Tobago Primary School Track and Field Championships generates loads of excitement. The young competitors from the island's various primary schools, clad in their colorful sporting gear, assembled at the Dwight York Stadium to kick off the action. The event also served as the perfect preparation for the national primary school games. We always grateful to have the stadium so that was one of the highs. The children had ample opportunity to run on a mundo surface which is great when we go to Trinidad to participate and to compete. They are at a level that they are comfortable doing it. There's an average of 50 events minus the relays which include both track and field so throws, jumps, sprints, these schools came out for bragging rights, but in the end, there could only be one winner, as Bonacord Primary School dominated the field this year. We had over 30 schools competing. Our top three schools were St. Andrews and Lincoln. They placed third. Second place was Scarborough RC. They were the defending champs of 2019. They were dethroned by Bonacord. Tobago is the national champion, and the young athletes are aiming to repeat once more. Our intention is to retain our titles because we won both titles last year in 2019. What we usually do, we have a series of training sessions between now and me um, within the stadium and for the tricky race as well. Special commendation went out to outstanding students Zia Tobias of Signal Hill Government Primary and Scarborough RC duo Kujia Stewart and Deja Reed. I'm Patricia Nicholson for Let's Stoke Tobago. Eagles Base Villa is designed for one purpose. It's really about taking advantage of that energizing view in an environment that whispers the word paradise. The infinity pool takes center stage within a yawning deck which flows from the huge open living space. And you know, speaking of the environment, climate change and the accompanying rise in sea temperatures can really damage our reefs through phenomena like coral bleaching. But is there anything we can do to help reverse this trend? Omidara Mills tells us more. The reefs surrounding the Tobago were placed on a coral bleaching alert watch in the late half of 2019 by the Institute of Marine Affairs, IMA. It can move up to a warning, then a coral alert, if ocean temperatures continue to rise. Coral reefs, like those found around the Tobago, are diverse marine ecosystems. They thrive best in warm, clear and shallow waters. They attract thousands of tourists and provide many jobs. But increasing ocean temperatures threaten the delicate life of the corals. Based on the heat that is generated by increasing greenhouse gases, the heat is absorbed by the surface layer of the ocean. And the ocean remember is the home for the corals and any change in that normal or the ideal condition for the corals it would create a heat stress and uh, which will result in coral bleaching. Corals are translucent invertebrate animals called polyps. One coral can contain thousands of these polyps. They have tiny tentacle-like limbs to capture food from the water. Corals also get food from the mutual relationship they share with the zooxanthellae algae, but that relationship is affected by fluctuating ocean temperatures. Whenever there is a heat stress, such as increase in the sea surface temperature, the, the balance or the relationship between the coral and the algae, it fails and the algae are expelled from the coral tissue. Now, algae are important because they create, they produce food for the corals as well as they give the corals their color. So when these algae are expelled from the coral tissue, you will have that stark white color which we know as coral bleaching. Being in a bleached state over a prolonged period could mean disease and even death for corals, leading to a reduction in marine life. There's also the chance that coastal erosion will be expedited without the coral reefs. Officers at the Department of Marine Resources and Fisheries 
have some suggestions that may help conserve our corals. We as humans are also encouraged to reduce our carbon footprint. So, for example, we are encouraged to turn off the lights when they are not in use. We are also encouraged to carpool. We can um, help by reporting any coral bleaching that you observe. All right, reporting the coral bleaching. If you get GPS locations of where you notice it, that's one. Secondly, we should try to increase the quality of the water or near shore waters because the better condition of the water in shore we have, the more likely the coral can survive after a bleaching incident. The THA's Department of Marine Resources and Fisheries is monitoring the coral bleaching phenomenon in collaboration with the IMA and environmental NGOs. If you want more information on coral bleaching or to report it, you can call 639 or 354 or 639-4446. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. In our next story, a program is giving mentorship in Tobago a community focus. It's coming up right after this break. Stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. The villa and the cottage sit side by side at the top, while the rest of the estate is covered in lush green lawns that gently slope downwards. Fruit trees, flowers and the majestic coconut trees complete the ambience. Now the Me to We mentorship program is not just another run-off-the-mill initiative. It's a movement reflecting the principle that it really takes a village to raise a child. It's also encouraging the public to volunteer for youth mentorship. We have all the details in this story. We all know the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And that's the premise behind the Me to We mentorship program. The Volunteer Center of Trinidad and Tobago's mission is to connect people, fuel hope, and collaborate for change. And in partnership with the Princess Trust International, the National Training Agency, and SAR, a unique mentorship program entitled Me to We will soon be launched. Currently, the team is recruiting volunteer mentors for the Tobago Arm. The Me To We Mentorship Program creates that village for that child because we understand that society today has those breakdowns in the first, I would say the first courtroom, which is your family. And families have their challenges, and so what we're doing is stepping in for the gap so that we can have many mentors to one student. Once selected, volunteers will be trained and can work towards a single unit award in coaching at UK Level 3. One secondary school will be chosen in Tobago with approximately seven students involved in the program. In Tobago, we have one school that we're doing, and, but it's 30 children throughout Trinidad and Tobago that we're going to pilot this program with. And mentors can apply uh, on our Facebook page and our Instagram page, which you would see the Need to Be application form, and from the application there's a formal interview, and then you're selected. Volunteers will be trained on April 17th and 18th, and the program will be officially launched thereafter. It starts with what we would call the inspiration sessions. The inspiration sessions are sessions where the children are exposed to I would say popular faces, faces that they would probably see on TV or hear on the radio, and they will have the ability to interact with those persons. And so that is a, uh, many children to one of those, I would say, primary mentors. And then from there, we go into what we call the professional development sessions, where it's a, it's a lot more uh, workshop-esque, if I should say so. And those would cover topics that we've gathered the data for that the students will be struggling. The pilot program will run for one year. The goal is to have the students mentally, physically and emotionally fit. And it's time to have your say with Marlon Gottlieben. It is the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. We'll now have a look at who had their say this week. No, 
Then there was A. That's not hold on. Well, we are. I'm very concerned about the whole virus situation because it's, it, you know, it is very much alarming to see what is happening on the on the uh, on the wider scale. But I know that in everything, you know, we have to be, you know, very precautious in, you know, how we how we deal with it and not to panic. Because I think it's most of what is really panicking is what creating the, the, the you know the our the that kind of fearfulness about the whole virus. I mean virus come and go every day, every time. I am concerned of about the coronavirus. In a scale of one to ten, about eight. You know, seeing that Tobago is being marketed as a tourism attraction. You know, we have people coming in from all over the world. So yes, I am concerned in terms of persons, you know, bringing, coming with disease and transmitting. I am quite concerned, um, not panicking though. Um, I think the information that's been presented by the Ministry of Health um, and the other stakeholders are on point. Um, and we just need to observe uh, proper hygiene, you know, proper hand washing techniques and to, to continue to insist that our children um, and all persons um, really observe proper hygiene. For the coronavirus, which is COVID-19, that is the name that has been given to it now, um, you know it is an international pandemic, which means that it's affecting us internationally. But we, as you're aware, we have no known cases here in Trinidad and Tobago. But it is an issue for which all of us should be concerned because we have relatives internationally. We have relatives living abroad and therefore we ought to be concerned not only for ourselves but for the loved ones that we have living internationally. I'm very much concerned. They say that you could pass through your nose, your mouth and your eye but at the same time they tell you you don't have to wear a mask. So uh, you know I'm kind of, it, it, it sounds kind of contradictory to me. It's um, very um, particular in people that are coming in into the island because uh, this is a very deadly disease and we have to be very careful with people coming in and going out of the island. So we have come to the end of yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, for more information on this villa, Eagles Base Villa, you can contact 319-9394 or you can visit their website at www.eaglesbasevilla.com. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, do have a fantastic week. We leave you now with a montage of Soka After Mass 2020. We really hope you enjoy.